On 3 October 1967, the elongated X-15A2 achieved the highest speed of the X-15 program by reaching Mach 6.7, or 4,520 miles an hour. Air Force Major Pete Knight was at the controls. These historic films document the preparation of the X-15 for that flight and the actual launch and recovery. The research purpose of the longer X-15 involved development of a supersonic combustion ramjet engine. The anticipated speeds for this program necessitated additional fuel for the X-15A2 carried in two streamlined droppable fuel tanks. The extra fuselage length was intended to carry fuel for the ramjet once it was ready for flight testing. The high speeds also promised danger for the X-15's Inconel X alloy construction, so the entire aircraft was covered with an ablative heat shield. As a precaution, the left side of the two cockpit windows was blanked for heat protection, and the right side was expected to become obscured as a byproduct of the high heat mission. Once the X-15A2 slowed to about Mach 1.6 as it returned to land, the ablative cover on the left window was jettisoned, giving Knight sufficient visibility to perform a landing.
For Pete Knight's record flight in the X-15A2, a dummy ramjet shape was affixed to the ventral fin for aerodynamic testing. This shape almost proved to be a fatal flaw, as it directed heated airflow against parts of the X-15's aft fuselage that started to melt and disintegrate. Temperatures were calculated to be 10 times higher than normal where the airflow had been focused by the ramjet shape. Knight made a safe landing on Rogers Dry Lake at Edwards Air Force Base. Throughout the 199 Mission X-15 program, the three vehicles set numerous unofficial speed and altitude records, but the records were mostly a byproduct of serious research into high altitude and high speed flight that created two basic mission profiles for the X-15 program. Speed missions flew a flatter trajectory. They were devised to acquire valuable information about friction heating of high speed aircraft structures. Altitude missions arced high enough to earn astronaut status for eight of the X-15's pilots, who attained the Air Force's criterion altitude of 50 miles. The altitude flights provided a wealth of research experience, including the use of reaction rockets for steering in near space, and gave confidence in the ability to recover a flying vehicle from space to a safe landing.
The X-15A2 was placed in the Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio. The B-52 mothership that carried Pete Knight aloft that day was eventually retired to the Air Force Flight Test Museum at Edwards Air Force Base, California.